Greetings and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you're here today. It seems like a million years since I actually made a video about records and it seems like a million years ago because the world has changed so much and what has it been? Two weeks with the bombing by Russia of Ukraine? Uh, I get up every morning and look at the New York Times, get the latest you know, horror update and it's just, it's just unbelievable what's happening in the world. This seems like the beginning of World War III. I'm not saying anything new there. Uh, my father fought in World War II, and I have all the photographs of his journeys through France and Germany and Austria and all over Europe. I have to salute uh, Michael over at 45 RPM Audiophile, and uh, he did a really amazing video, and he sort of summed it all up. It's hard to talk about records when the world is almost on fire, and he feels it more personally than, than I do, obviously, or many of us, because his wife is Ukrainian. I believe he started some sort of a Ukrainian fund, and uh, I suggest you give to that fund, or to any fund. There's UNICEF, there's so many funds to help the people of the Ukraine. But uh, luckily we do have records to make us happy and to turn our attention away from the horror of the news. And I am proud to report my findings. I uh, compared four pressings, four different pressings, the new Acoustic Sounds reissue of Crescent, two new Classics reissues of Jackie McLean, Destination Out, and Lee Morgan, Carumba, and the slightly earlier Classics reissue of Joe Henderson, Inner Urge. And uh, I did all my, my work. I'm reviewing a, the new Techniques SUG 700M2 integrated amp, which is a scaled-down version of the Techniques SUR1000 that I reviewed for Stereophile, which was an, a phenomenal amplifier. This is a good amplifier. Uh, it easily competes with the other integra integrated amplifiers I have in my apartment in that $2,000 to $3,000 range. It doesn't match the SUR1000, how could it? That's a $10,000 amplifier, but it sounds really fantastic. And um, its playback of digital files was just okay, but its onboard phono stage, which is purely analog, even though it's a Class D amp, sounds really fantastic. And that's what I did all my uh, comparing uh, test with using my Stab ER turntable and EMT TDS-15 cart. So let's get to it, shall we? Starting with the Lee, Lee Morgan. This is my 1968 Liberty version. Uh, I think Reed Miles was obviously gone by this point. Who knows who was doing the artwork. But the new reissue, and I was wondering if they would do this, since these are not tone poets, they've done a great job of replicating the original gatefold. Side by side, they look almost exactly the same. Even though looking at it here, the positioning on the back of the woman's arm and the uh, lace is slightly different. But uh, otherwise, almost identical. They did a wonderful job. The, uh, the color looks great. Looks like they found some original slides or whatever it is they use. Mine has a hole punch and a cutout. Uh, but comparing between the two, the Classics reissue and the My 68 Liberty, the Classics was superior to my 68 Liberty. Boom, right out of the gate. Now, this is not always the case when I'm reviewing or comparing Classics or Tone Poets to the early pressings or originals I have. It just, as I've said before, I think it's a case-by-case -case thing. But in this case, uh, this record, and Caramba is a very hard Lee Morgan record to find. I think he probably wasn't as popular then. It was near the end of his career. Um, I believe that's correct. He was doing so many records. But my notes say here, that the new classic version it has very tight bass, good imaging, tart and spicy uh, horn lineup, unusual horn lineup. Benny Maupin on tenor sax and Lee Morgan on bass, Reggie working on drums, and the great Billy Higgins, who played on so many great Lee Morgan dates on drums. Um, it's very resolute, clear mids, good, uh, it's very upfront, very, very immediate. The 68 reissue is not up front, it's sort of recessed, it's less dimensional. The bass is a little clearer, but that's only because I think things aren't quite as full overall. When you take away some things, other, other things can sound uh, better, such as also there's a cowbell, and the cowbell sounds more forward on my old reissue. That's simply because the entire soundstage and weight is uh, diminished compared to the new pressing. So, I mean, who knows? I don't know why it is that sometimes uh, new pressings sound better than old or vice versa. I can't help but think it's just some amount of tape degradation. But hey, what, I, what do I know? Joe Harley and Kevin Gray doing fantastic work as always. You know, everybody speaks of the records and the pressings, but what's also amazing is how they're able to um, replicate the original stock. 
Now with Town Poets, they're obviously doing a lot more than the original Blue Notes, even though I prefer an original OG beautiful laminate Blue Note release, and it's primarily because the paint stock is just so stunning. They can't replicate that kind of paint now, or it may be this, when they laminated it, something happened under the lamination that gave the, the old Blue Notes such an incredibly dense, thick, powerful, saturated, colorful look. But by and large, they do a fantastic job. My 68 reissue has less ambiance or air, which would, speaking of Billy Higgins, who was such a, a, a magician on the cymbals and the snare drum, you really want to hear all that air. You want to hear his dance. He's one of the great dancing jazz drummers in existence. He just, you know, whenever you saw photos of Billy Higgins, he was always smiling and happy, and that's the way his drumming sounds. And the great Reggie Workman. Thumbs up on the new Caramba! Then we have the new reissue of Made in Germany, which I guess is Pup Palace. Uh, Jackie McClung's Destination out. There's the new classic vinyl reissue series. Here is my Liberty reissue. As you can see, they've done a beautiful job, I do believe. On the back as well, but they've done a fantastic job. Audiophile vinyl reissues from the finest in jazz in 1939, mastered from the original analog tapes, mastered by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio, manufactured at Optimal. Now it's funny they have Kevin Gray's name on the front, but not Joe Harley. I believe the whole thing about the uh, re vinyl reissue series is we are not repeating what we did at Music Matters. But I digress. And the findings are very similar for these two, as with um, the Lee Morgan Corumba, which just honestly just kind of surprised me. I wrote here, my OG, my original gangster, 71, which the original is like 68, so this is a New Yorker or Liberty present. Very spicy, very clear, lots of energy, lots of attack. On both of the Morgan and the McLean, it's very hard left and right panning. Usually with the bass down the middle and the drums either in the middle or in the back. And in both reissues, the piano is sort of to the right and the back and distant. Nothing new about that. Um, but the original has good momentum. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson's on this disc, I believe. And the vibes are nicely forward. It's very fluid. The bass is centered. Uh, the bass tone is nice and clear. It sounds good, but I was very impressed by how much better the classic s sounded. Um, the horns have more fullness, and there is just more texture to each instrument. Better resolution resulting in more texture, better microdynamics, uh, a better sense of ambient space, more depth. All these things combine to a more live sounding experience, a truer experience that sounds bigger, not squashed. Fuller sounding. The imaging was the same, which is interesting, because you can't really change a mix. Bass had more weight, was equally clear, and it all is also just smoother sounding overall. Both are a little arid, a little dry, but I own that to the phono stage in the Technique Amp I'm reviewing. And also, again, the, uh, the musician sounded much more immediate on the new classic vinyl reissue. Cheers! Well worth your $25. Mmm, buy it now, thank you. Joe Henderson and Urge, the great Joe Henderson, uh, I believe his uh, fame and uh, popularity has only grown in the years since he made all these records. This is the classic vinyl series reissue of Inner Urge. This is an early New York pressing in the shrink wrap. And here's another New York pressing, not on the shrink wrap, which I paid 50 bucks for at Jazz Record Center. These probably go for closer to 75 now because all you good people are buying these records. Now this was the opposite uh, situation of the McLean and the Morgan. The original, or the New York pressing, off the top of my head I don't know if the New York is the original pressing, was superior to this uh, reissue. This is the before the latest reissue series. It just, there was no comparison. It was almost in reverse on the original or the early pressing. Uh, even though the, the, the new reissue is a little more balanced between the instruments, um, on the original, everything is more up front, and especially the horn has higher resolution, is more immediate, is fuller sounding, uh, and the whole presenta presentation is warmer, more up front, sounds more natural, more incisive. I wrote on the reissue, good body, warmth, imaging, good bass weight, clarity, drums and cymbals, clear and clean, reasonably weighty, the horn arid and tart, good texture. But 
on the original, on the OG with the ring wear. Horn much fuller, warmer, more up front, more natural, more spacious. Bass solo not as defined, but deeper toned on the original. Isn't that strange? I, I can't explain these things. I don't know why. Um, the horns also had more body, more, uh, more up front, uh, and there seemed to be a little less noise or spurious something on the original. That's really strange. Uh, and then finally, out of all these records that we were just talking about, none of them is any harder to find than a clean copy of this. In my experience, I, I can find Liberty Blue Notes and UA Blue Notes and New York, any kind of blue note that... You know, I can usually find a clean pressing. When I find it, it's often clean. But for some reason, with most of the impulse records I have, they are played, man. I don't know why that is, and that's particularly true of all the Coltrane records. I have about three versions of Crescent, which may be one of my favorite Coltrane records, the classic quartet with um, Court Tyner, Jimmy Garrison, and Elvin Jones. But these records are played when you find them, man. This is a mono, so this was a little harder to... Uh, compare, but this is the mono, and if you'll notice, it is not laminated. This was the original mono, and it's not laminated, but the new one, which looks beautiful, obviously is laminated, because they know everybody wants their laminated records, and side by side, they, uh, you know, fantastic reproduction. I mean, really, you know, when you see a crummy reproduction, and I won't name names of, of bootleggers or other labels that have done inferior reissues, I don't know what they're using half the time. There's just less care, but obviously Universal can go back to the original prints, the original slides. So, but in this case, what I found to be true, uh, I preferred the mono, and not because it, just it was mono. You know, overall, it was, the older pressing was, was more cohesive. It sounded less like separated instruments. Obviously, the new reissue is, uh, you know, things are panned hard right, but there was just more of an earthiness to the original pressing. And I found that to be true on a few Impulse titles. Now, I think I might be wrong. I'm not really sure. Someone will correct me. Are the Impulse titles at Acoustic Sounds done from the tapes? I know that Vital Vinyl from Verve is not done from tapes. It's done from files by the great Kevin Reeves. But... What did I say here? My 64, that's a, this is the 1964 version of this record. Fuller, more cohesive sounding, less edge, similar tonality, similar placement. The piano is more up front. Cymbals and drums have, there's better cymbal air, which surprised me. You'd think the newer pressing would have better air. You know, they clean things up or there's more resolution. As were my AP crescent, I wrote down here, clean, full horn lines. A little, uh, the horns are a little faint and soft, I wrote here. There's a long rubato intro, and then the piano and drums and bass come in playing more form. And on both records, when that happens, things become much more solid, but it just didn't sound as good as the my original pressing. I never know what's going to happen. I don't go into these comparisons with any opinion. I'm just waiting to see whatever it is I hear. I don't have a bias one way or the other. I have some questions. You know, you've heard me complain in the past, why do a lot of the new... Blue Note reissues not have some of the upper level air, but on, in this uh, shootout, the reissue sounded better than my original or early reissues. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm glad you're here, and let's uh, say a prayer for our insane world.